for students today i'm going to read about a story called young the youngest from your main course book now let's read on with the story how do children cope with culture shock now culture shock here means uh, here implies that if you go to a different country or different part of uh, a state and uh, you will find that it's quite uh, dissimilar from what you have been grown up with so if you have to live there then you have to adjust to their culture and society including everything food dress maybe most of the things the way you speak the way you everything might undergo a lot of changes what happens when a schoolboy and his siblings migrate from one country to another and find themselves in the middle of an alien face or alien faces and strange customs read the following story about a chinese boy and his siblings brothers sisters maybe who came to america for the first time and have to go to a new school so going to an american school all mixed culture and coming from a chinese family it is not going to be an easy one so stories like that our family arrived in america in the winter and the school year was almost half over so when i started school the other students in my class already knew each other to enough english to make things worse i didn't even know enough english to be able to make friends but language was only one of my problems so one of my problems here implies that he had many problems and english was one of his because a chinese child may not be able to speak english that fluently or it will be very difficult for him to understand uh, how the accent of the american accent you know it's it's uh, difficult american kids scared me at first they yelled terribly loud and ran fast in the hallways for the first few weeks i found myself hugging the walls it was like that time in china when i learned to swim i was afraid to let go of the side of the pool because in the middle no, where uh, in the middle were other uh, swimmers splashing around like sharks so he is comparing the children american children to some um, uh, to the to sharks they are so uh, dangerous they are always running about yelling and uh, it was uh, not like in china and he remembered that when he was in china he was learning to swim uh, he was holding to one side of the railings or side of the swimming pool to and not letting it go for uh, safety he was scared once when i was walking in the hallway at school i turned a corner and bumped into a boy he was running so fast that he knocked me off my feet he pulled me upright and shook me a little maybe he wanted to see if any parts were rattling loose when i said that i wasn't hurt he winked at me laughed and said hey no sweat so there was one boy that he came across while walking in the school and the boy was near running spree and he hit you know uh yang and yang fell down and and this boy american boy uh, got him up shook him and as if to see whether he's okay he, and um, then yang said i'm fine then he said okay no sweat now that's an american uh, slang you know it's an american slang you can look at the meaning no problem okay no problem so you can read the meaning there He looked so cheerful that I laughed too. No sweat sounded like a good phrase and I told third sister about it. She added it to her list of new words and she came across in a new country. In a few weeks I learned to walk just as fast and shove my way just as hard as the other kids. My parents even complained about it. You are becoming too rough, Ying Tao. why do you have to stomp your feet so hard so when you just tell you when you stay in another place a new place and you learn and you try to adjust even yang you know he became like the others running all the time and his parents were quite concerned what happened to you why are you always stomping around yang to you know before i got used to the american school the other kids laughed at some of the things that i did Each morning as soon as the teacher came into the class I jumped to my feet and stood stiffly at attention that was how we showed our respect to our teachers in China so you know that's uh, 
quite odd you know it should not be done by american children too they should also stand up and say wish good morning or stand up and uh, show some respect like yang to he should stand up straight and in an attention position you know it's like uh, this and then uh, it's to you know uh, to to so respect to the to the teacher in the class and this made the other children um, you know laugh at him they found it very rather funny and unwanted the first thing i did here the teacher asked me whether i needed something i looked around and saw that nobody else was standing up so teacher was also very confused american teacher she is not used to someone standing straight like that and she asked him do you need something and when uh, yang looked around him that everybody was seated and they were all laughing at him feeling foolish i shook my head and sat down when i did it again the next a couple of kids behind me started to snigger snigger means you can look at the meaning here giggle sneer or laugh in a mocking way laughing at him after that i remembered not to jump up but i half rose a few times one boy used to watch me and if i saw my bottom leave my say it he would whisper down fido again down fido is an american slang used for a person who is weird and silly so he, they called him fido and you can see the meaning here so the moment you know he, because he is used to this culture of custom of wishing his teachers he used to stand up and as he was trying to stand up they once student would observe him and he said down fido means sit down you don't have to you weird all the time standing in an attention position but then it was a very good habit that he learned in china third sister was a great help during those early days so he had three sisters me while the other kids were busy talking and or playing games at recess she and i stood in a corner and kept each other company every day we walked together to our elementary school which was not far from our house so the third sister was very you know kind and she used to come she was also feeling maybe a little home uh, out of place and she used to talk with her uh, with uh, her brother and uh, her brother used to you know uh have some time with her so they used to feel relaxed in that way i uh the third sister uh sorry uh eldest brother and the second uh sister took a big yellow bus to a school that was farther away if eldest brother had trouble making friends it didn't seem to bother him music was the only thing he clearly cared for so the third sister Uh, the second sister and the eldest brother they used to go to another school in a yellow bus and they don't uh, had uh, they did not have much problem because the eldest brother was very musically inclined and so music you know cured him maybe from all this uh, in a culture uh, change or customs that he has gone to a new place so it didn't make any difference to him i think second sister felt the loneliness In China people always said she would turn out to be a real beauty. She had been popular at school there, always surrounded by friends, but in America not many people told her that she was beautiful. These days she has often cranky she was often cranky and sad. Mother told the rest of us that we just had to be patient with her. The second sister felt lonely because uh, more lonely because in in china she was uh, you know just to be a beautiful girl everybody used to praise her but in america with her chinky appearance maybe it was not appealing and nobody told her she is beautiful and she missed that attention and that is why she felt uh, lonely and she slowly became little cranky and angry maybe and their mother told that be patient with her we need to give her some more time to adjust so even the mother was quite kind and helpful The third sister had no trouble at all making friends. Even before she could speak much English, she w- began chatting with her kids. She could always fill the gaps with laughter. So the third sister was pretty cool. She made a lot of friends and when there were some gaps, they would be she would be chatting and there would be a lot of uh, laughter and fun. During lunch, she and I sat at a table with mostly Asian Americans. So Asian Americans are those people from asia who was settled down in america at first we didn't understand what asian americans meant when we were filling out registration forms at school we put down chinese in the space marked race the secretary at the school told us to change it into asian american 
with a big smile. We have a number of Asian Americans at the school, so you'll be able to make friends easily. So there is a lot of students who are studying in the school who are from Asia, and they have settled in America, so they are called Asian Americans. My class teacher must have felt the same because on my first day in class, she seated me next to a girl who was also Asian American. I greeted her in Chinese, but she just shook her head. I'm afraid I don't understand Japanese, she said in English. I wasn't speaking Japanese. I told her I was speaking Chinese. Sorry, I don't understand that either. My family is from Korea. So we all think that in Northeast, we think all the people are from the same place, you know. There Manipur is there, Arunachal is there, people from Nagaland and uh, Tripura and all. So we generally term them as one. Similarly, we, we term the Chinese, Japanese, Korean to be the same, but they are totally different. And they speak very different languages. So this girl was from Korea. And um, the, the, the Yang was difficult for her. Uh, for him uh, to understand why she was not able to understand Japanese because she looked alike. Anyway, the next part of the story I'll be talking about in the next class. So, goodbye and have a nice day.